Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to take our Phoenix app to the next level. Instead of using a mock variable, a constant, we're going to integrate it with the database. So, in order to start, I need to explain exactly what is Ecto. Now, Ecto is the ORM equivalent on the Elixir world. I cannot say that Ecto is an ORM because Elixir is a functional programming language. So I'm just going to say that Ecto is the database wrapper that we use in Elixir land in order to talk to the database. And on this video specifically, I'm going to talk about two topics, schema and migrations, right? So in order to start, I am going to generate a schema sorry, a migration to our products table inside the database. And if you are not familiar with this concept of migration, a migration is pretty much a file that you create. And inside this file, you describe which changes you want to do on the database. Because let's, let's take an example of you're working with a team and you want to create a new table called the products then you do it locally and then what how are your teammates going to be aware that a new table needs to be created are you going to send a message to them on slack saying hey i created the products table please do it uh, this is not a very scalable way of dealing with changes on your database so if you're working with sql specifically it's very common to use migrations and i'm going to use text as an example so tech school is a full stack app meaning that i work with the database so inside the priv folder you're going to open up repo migrations and here you can find all the migrations that i created i have one this one specifically i mean you can read it but it creates a table called languages where i have two columns name and image url and inside this migration, I also create a unique index for the name field. And you don't have to create a table. You can create, for example, let me take this one. Here, I am altering a table called tools, where I add a new column called image URL. Okay, so it's just a file that is going to describe what you are about to do on your database. So going back to our example, how do I generate a migration inside Phoenix? We're going to use a Phoenix generator and Phoenix has a ton of generators. We have one specifically for creating just the schema, another one that generates the schema and the migration. We also have uh, other ones that I use all the time. These, uh, these last four generators I use every day. The first one just creates a schema, migration, and context. And the other ones is to create the front end as well. So if you want the context, but also you want the view layer, which is typically HTML, JSON, or live view, then you're going to use these three generators. But on today's video, we're going to run mixphx.gen.schema because we want these two things, the schema and the migration. And what's the syntax for this generator? You're going to run, I mean, I have the documentation right here and I'm going to link it in the description of this video, but we're going to run mix phx.gen.schema followed by, and now you're going to create the name of the module inside Elixir that is going to represent uh, this data on your Elixir code. We also call this the schema. So since this is an Elixir module, you're going to type the name here is product with the first letter uppercase because it's an Elixir module. So I'm going to say product followed by the name of your database table. So the table I'm going to use underscore for all the letters and I'm going to use plural. And we're not going to use this anywhere on the Elixir code. This is for the database specifically. So I'm gonna type products. Now you can start typing the name of each column 
inside the products table. And by default, if you do not specify a type for the column, it is going to be string, which is varchar. So here, the product has a name. I can type name colon string if I want to specifically say it's a string. But if I don't pass colon string, then Elixir is going to assume that name is a string. Then I also want to add a slug field. Now, the slug is also a string, but there's another thing that I want to add here, and that is the slug is unique. So you can type slug column unique. Okay. The next field I want to create is console. Now, console is an enum because I want the console to specifically be Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, or PC. I don't want any other uh, console. So this is an enum. And how do you create an enum? Using the Phoenix generators, you can say colon, enum, then colon, followed by all the possible values for your enum. So here is PC, Xbox, Nintendo, and PlayStation. Okay, I think that's all we need for now. If I forget any other field, I'll probably generate another migration to add the missing columns. And you can go crazy with ge this generator. So for example, if I had a separate table and I wanted to link uh, to reference this other table here, you can go back to the documentation, but here are all the available types that are supported. Uh, integer, float, decimal, map, string, array. We also have enum, which is what we're using. And if you want to reference another table, you can add the references. So let me show you an example of how to do that. So if you have a blog post, for example, and a blog post belongs to a user, you can type that you have a user ID field and the user ID references the user. But this is a more complex use case. For our example, this is more than enough. So let's press enter. And as you can see, we created two files. The first one is inside lib. The second one is inside priv repo migrations. And before we open that file, we need to run mix ecto migrate to effectively run the migration that we just created. So I'm going to type mix ecto migrate. Uh, oh, here's the thing. I was preparing for this video, right? and I already ran the migration. So here I'm trying to run the migration again. So there is a, I mean, I am the only one that is going to run this command. You don't have to because you're running it for the first time. But if you want to drop your database locally, you can type mix ecto dot drop. Okay, and then I'm going to run mix ecto migrate again. Nice, so this is working. So let's go back to check which files were generated. The first one, no, I'm going to go to the migrations one first. Let's check it out. So inside Privo, rep, uh, repo migrations, we have this file here. We have like a unique identifier for it, underscore, and then the name of your migration. And here, as you can see, we're creating a table called the products. We have three fields called name, slug, and console. And then we also have this uh, helper function here, and you're going to find out what it does in a couple of minutes, but you can guess. And then we also have a unique index for the slug. All right. Now let's check the other file. The other one is inside lib. And why is this one inside lib? Because you're going to use this schema throughout your code. And what exactly is a schema? A schema is a way of linking your Elixir code to a specific entity from your database. And under the hood, Elixir is going to create a struct for the products. 
and then you're going to pass that, st that struct around in order to work with the users, oh, sorry, the products uh, entity from your database. So let me run this code real quick. I'm going to run IEX dash S mix PHX server because I want to run my server and run an IEX shell inside. So here I can say, for example, uh, game is equal to, and let's start typing the name of this struct, which is shop.product. So I'm going to say shop.product. And if you press tab, this is the only struct available. So it's going to autocomplete. And as you can see here, we have a name. So I'm going to say name uh, Diablo 4. We also have a slug. So slug, that's Diablo dash 4. And then we also have a console. And we are only allowed to use one of those values because that's an enum. And the console, I'm going to say that this game is from Nintendo. No, sorry, not Nintendo. PC. Okay. Now, if I press enter, check this out. We now have a struct where we used those fields that we passed, which is name, console, and slug. But hold up. We have like a hidden field called ID, inserted at, and updated at. Now, remember, the role of the schema is to map your Elixir code to your database. And inside your database, you do have these three fields that we didn't pass a value to. And that's exactly what this uh, hidden function right here of timestamps does. It creates the inserted at and updated at fields. Okay. And this is all for today's video. I am going to record a separate video to talk about chain set, but a TLDR, a spoiler is that the chain set is a function that is going to run before you interact with your database. Because like, let's assume that I'm creating a product and I'm passing um, a value that is not allowed. So like, I don't know, I'm creating a user and I'm passing is admin equals true. How can I prevent this is admin to be added to the database? Well, you add a bunch of validations inside your chain set. But yeah, we're going to have a separate video about it. Hope you enjoyed this one. See you next time.